How many know that God can do something in a moment, right now? Today I'm going to talk to you about prophecy now, what God can do in a moment. You're going to hear from four different testimonies of what God can do now. If you're not used to a spirit-filled church, uh, I just say hang around because you'll see that it's very real. You'll see a lot of sincere people. You'll see God moving touching, speaking. Uh, I got a beautiful scripture this week to share for the season the heart is in. It's from Pastor Paul of old, speaking to the church of the Thessalonians. And he says this in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 22. He says, rejoice always. Say that with me, rejoice always. That's a great scripture when you're fasting. I asked my wife yesterday on the way to church, I said, hey, I know I was grumpy at the beginning of the week. How did I do towards the end of the week? And she said I, I had done very well. And so when I'm fasting, when I'm fasting, my flesh can really flare up. Like right now. Like now. Hangry J O. Just I'm just so I was really blessed she told me that. It goes on to say, prayer without, pray without ceasing. We're going to talk about that in a minute, about prayer. In everything, give thanks. How many know that's a wonderful thing? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Look at this. Do not quench the spirit. You're at a church that we long not to quench the spirit. Individually, as a church, in a corporate gathering, we do not want to quench the spirit. Look what it goes on into. It says, do not despise prophecies. Well, Jay, I would never despise prophecies. Well, I think a lot of people despise prophecy by not believing. I think people despise prophecy by, they, by saying that it ceased with Jesus or with the apostles' death. Uh, and I would encourage you not to despise prophecies. I'm not asking you to be stupid. It says, test all things. Every word that comes out of here, test it. Test it, test it. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Amen. Father, thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, have your way. Like we sing, Spirit, come. We say that. That's an that's a echo in our heart that you come and you move among us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. I need you to do something if you'd put that up, the Seek Week schedule, everyone pull out their phones, please. I'm going to use, ask you to use it for something of godliness. It's like if I was telling you to get Facebook right now, you'd be yanking it all out, just pull it. I want you to take your phone and take a holy picture. Just in case you forget. Thank you. I pray that picture brings great conviction this week. When you're laying in bed, possibly. Students, Coeur d'Alene High. Um, middle school, Lake City, elementary. Guess what? You don't have school tomorrow. Put that back up, please, if you don't mind. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> No school. J.O., I get to pray. Push. Pray until something happens. Monday, 7. Tuesday, 7 and noon. This is not just for students. Believe me. Mm -mm. From the womb to the tomb. Wednesday, 7 and noon. Thursday, 7 and noon. Friday, 7 o'clock. It'd be great. I've, I've prayed for years that, like Gideon, we'd have 300 people show up for prayer. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that would just rock. And so if you're a city group leader, I encourage you to bring your whole city group. Man, have city group right here in prayer. And so if there's any way that you can come, I know there's some people that can't come. I get it. But I do know there's a lot of people that could just do this with their schedule just a little bit. Keek, and you could actually be here. And so I encourage you to do that this week. Um, prayers are answered at times in the moment. Sometimes they're delayed. Uh, Daniel 21, 
days delayed. Uh, sometimes a prayer can be yes or no from God. But his promises are always yes and amen. So I encourage you to come and pray. I want to share a secret with you, something that I prayed. I don't always discuss these secrets, but I will uh, to hope encourage your faith. Uh, in the year of 2019, our Thanksgiving offering was a little over $17,000. So just fill that for a moment, 2019, a little over 17000 right? And then in 2020, it was a little bit over 44000 right? Well, what I did, I felt like the Lord challenged me to give a number, uh, and I felt like, okay, God, I'm going to ask for this amount because it's going to sex slavery, human trafficking, here locally and afar, and... Uh, I said, I got a number. And Bobby Carmody says, you should go write that down. And I did. I wrote it in my phone, and I want you to look at this number. So you can see on November 21st, the offering was given on the 25th. On the 21st uh, at 1029, I wrote down, I even wrote the date again, but you can see the date on my, my phone. Why is that so important? Because we went from 17000 to 44000 to this year, over $71,000 came in for Thanksgiving offering. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And I just encourage you the power of prayer, the power of being specific. Dr. Yungi Cho, whenever he would pray, he says the key to revival is prayer. And he would pray for a bicycle. And the Lord would say, what color would you like to have a basket on it? And he was very specific with his prayer. And by the way, it turned out to be the largest church in the world in uh, so Korea, so forth and so on. So I, I just encourage you to pray very, very, very specifically. Uh, the prayers, you've heard me say it a hundred times, or a thousand, maybe a million. Prayer is, the, it is the, the engine room of the church. And when it comes to prophecy, it is the fire. It is the fire that goes before God. I'm telling you, we, we got to pray. And, and of course, worship. We know that praise and worship he comes and inhabits. You, you wonder why people are so excited to worship. Well, because we know that he, he, he inhabits the praises of his people. He comes and sets among us in our midst of wor worship and praise. And so I just encourage you to jump on board with that in a prophetic atmosphere. And when I say prophetic atmosphere, you won't find those terms in the Bible. But what I mean by that is the manifested glory of God. When God's here and you're like, wow, he's here. You know, there's the principal presence. I know that if I'm praying with Pat right here, I know he's there because two or more are gathered in his name. He's there. I know if I go elk hunting on top of a mountain, he's there because he's, uh, he's omnipresent. But there's the manifested presence of God where he comes in our midst, the cabal, the, the glory, the, the heaviness, the weight of God. And that's what we long for. In that prophetic atmosphere, many things happen. You're going to hear a story today of, of a healing Hope happens, salvation happens, confirmation. It's amazing how God will confirm, how he'll birth dreams and visions in your heart in the midst of a prophetic atmosphere. Provision, on and on and on. Uh, one special thing that took place in my life in a prophetic atmosphere was impartation. Say that with me if you would, impartation. It's biblical, Old and New Testament. You'll see it in Romans 1.11. The Bible says this in Romans 1.11. Paul speaking to the church of Rome. He says, For I long to see you that I may impart, say that with me, impart, yeah. might impart to you a spiritual gift for a reason, so that you may be established. That impart means to give, to impart. And so a lot of times with a prophetic ministry, there is a impartation that sincerely takes place. And you know it, you feel it, and your life is changed. Radine and I, years ago, 23, 25 years ago, were invited to go to Detroit, Michigan, Motown. We went there to be in these gatherings, prophetic gatherings at a church, and the prophet, his name was Kim Clement, He's South African. He is an amazing musician. He passed away. He's on to be with the Lord. 
But we show up there with our friend Cheryl Frank Camp. We walk into the facility and nothing's happening yet, but there's thunder in the sanctuary. And I'm like, Ray Dean, wasn't it clear when we came inside? And, and so I, I go, I go I'm going to go outside. And I, I didn't know what was going on. I walk outside. It's sunny and blue, poofy, white clouds, and there's no thunder. I walk back into the sanctuary and thunder. What is going on in this place? All of a sudden, the worship team begins. There's this black dude, man, that could shred a cordless bass. His name was uh, Charlie, and he shredded with this other young group of, of, of young adults and so forth and so on that led worship, and they just ushered in the glory of God now. I mean, he was there. And then about three or four songs in, Kim comes out, and he gets on a piano, and it's one of those really big, fancy pianos, and he was raised like an a orchestra player, and he's very, 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 very gifted, and he's all over the piano, right? And then he begins sharing, and he says, you probably heard, uh, you may have heard thunder, and I'm like, yes, I did, I, what was going on? He goes, we've had these manifestations in our gathering. And he's South African, and I'm trying to act like and sound like him right now. And, and then he would have words of knowledge, and you could tell people's lives were just being dramatically, dramatically touched and changed. And like, you know when somebody's on, and somebody's reading their book, and it's very encouraging. And, and we sat through this, and man, the Spirit of God is just moving in that church and we're there I think it's the third night and uh, I'm like man I want that dude to pray for me because he carries an impartation and so he's very unorthodox very untraditional crazy unreligious and we worship and things are quite like it was earlier but then he gets up and he gives one word and then he goes I'm out of here. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait. Mm -mm, you ain't totally out of here. And I, I'm a hunter by you know, nature. And I, I've been watching this dude and watching what he's doing. And I jump out of my seat. I go around. And he's going down the stairs with these big bouncers around him. And I jump in right behind him. And I'm like, hey, hey, well, you think he'll pray for me? And the bouncer goes, no, there's no way. And Kim hears that. He looks. He goes, Come here. And I was like, all right, on like Donkey Kong. And I follow him down these dark stairs, I mean black. And he takes me into a room, and it's just me and him. And he begins to talk to me and ask me where I was from. And then he begins to kind of pray, prophesy over me. And when your feet, his Idaho. And it was just like all these things that were going to take place in my life. And the reason why I tell you this story is because in that moment, in that very moment, prophecy now, my life was changed in that moment. I've never been the same since. It was like fear just melted off of me and the fear of man, so forth and so on. So in a, in a prophetic moment, a prophetic atmosphere, it's amazing what God can do. Now let me back that up with scripture just for a moment. 1 Samuel 10, 5 through 6. It speaks of a guy named Sam, uh, Saul. Now, this is the book of Samuel. He writes it, but it speaks of the first king of Israel. And it says this, After you, have, you shall come to the hill of, of God where the Philistines' uh, garrison is, and it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with string instruments, a tambourine, a flute, and a harp before them, and they will be prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and you, Saul, I put Saul in there, you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. This is exactly what happened to me. This is exactly what happened to Saul, because if you read on just a few scriptures, there he comes, they're, they're playing, prophets are prophesying, Saul begins to prophesy, and then all of a sudden it says, hey, is Saul among the prophets also? And there's a proverb from it to this day talking about Saul being a, being a, a, a prophet. The power 
of prophecy, the power of the prophetic atmosphere. There was another uh, uh, prophet in the Bible, one of the most famous, powerful prophets. His name is Elijah with a J. And uh, he goes and he, he prays over two kings because he's about to be done with his life. And God's like, I'm not done with you yet. And he pulls him out of a cave. And it's amazing how God pulls people out of the cave because he has a great plan for you. If you are living in the cave right now, I got news for you. He has a great plan for you. Every person in this room, he has a plan for you. But you need to come out of the cave and get with it. And he comes out and he goes anoints two kings and a guy named Elisha, S-H-A. And Elisha follows him just like white on rice, man. He's on him day and night because he has a word. If you see him go up, the anointing of God is going to fall upon you. And then all of a sudden he goes up in a whirlwind. His mantle falls on Elisha and he receives a double portion. Say that with me, double portion. Double portion, man. A double portion. If you get a double portion of Elisha's uh, mantle, you have some crazy anointing on your life. And all of a sudden, he takes that mantle and he hits the water and it splits. He's like, oh, this works. And if I'm not mistaken, he does double the amount of miracles that Elisha did. His last one. They're trying to bury a young man. And raiders come into town. And they're not the Las Vegas raiders. <laughs> Different raiders, right? And they're real rushed. And man, they got to take care of this body. So they lower him down into the tomb of Elisha. And the young man's body touches the bones of Elisha. And guess what happened to the young man? He stands on his feet. He's alive. Miracle. You know why? You know why? Because Elisha, he's b -b 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 bad. He's b -b 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 bad to the bone, yo. Bad to the bone. Double portion anointing. Well, there was another young man 10 years ago that was very, very touched in a prophetic atmosphere. Um, wonderful young he was a wonderful young man then and now he's a wonderful young man now you're going to hear from him uh, I call him like Methodist back in the day he's been changed and God spoke to him and really imparted uh, something beautiful inside of Craig Brown's life would you put your hands together for break <laughs> This is our 10th year of the sound this year. Was anybody at the first one with me? Only a few of you. Wow. Raise your hand if you showed up to Heart of the City within the last 12 months. That's amazing. Look at all these people. So, you may not know exactly what you're walking into next weekend. That's okay. Um, I'm not really here today to talk to the, the prophetic believers. I'm here to talk to those that don't know, don't understand, doubt, you're skeptical, you're questioning, you're like, I don't know about all this because that's exactly who I was. I grew up going to, like you said, a, a Methodist church. I got my degree from a Presbyterian college. I learned ministry in a parachurch organization. I'm kind of like a mutt when it comes to theology, but I definitely wasn't charismatic. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, I found this group of people that believed in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit, but it wasn't weird. And I was like, there's something going on there at Heart of the City, and, and God led me here. But I had been to some prophetic things in the past, and I don't know, it might have just been the lens through which I was viewing it, but I was really turned off. I went to this prophetic gathering and I sat in the back and it just to me felt like all this dude is saying is generic stuff, talking about money, talking about blessing, and I really didn't like it at all. And so now all of a sudden I'm part of this church that's like, we're doing this prophetic conference and I was like, oh no, that's my, that's my church now. 
And so it wasn't just that I didn't know. I was like, I was pretty against, pretty, pretty like arm's length because I felt like there had been a lot of abuse or misuse of tongues and prophecy and all this stuff and man manipulating it to do, make, make themselves feel special. Or whatever. And that's just the lens through which I was viewing it. So I had that attitude, but in 2012, I showed up. There was also a good place in my heart that said, genuinely, God, just like the song today, actually. I said, God, if it's from you, I want it. If it's man-made, I want nothing to do with it. And so I showed up to the sound and our old building, our old sanctuary had the nursery like right in the back of the sanctuary. It'd be like if the babies were right there crying. It was cool. It was, it was a great time. You literally would go through the sanctuary and turn your kid into the nursery. And so I conveniently brought my daughter that year so I could stand at the back. So I was at the far back of the room watching JC leaning against the door frame. I remember leaning against the door frame and Matt Moult, he goes, this word is for you. And I was like, prove it, buddy. <laughs> like, I was like, here we go. And by the end of the weekend, all four of the, the prophets had spoken over me and it wasn't generic. If they said it about you, it, it would have been like, no, nah, that's off. It was, it was specific to me. It was speaking to me. And I was like, whoa, maybe there's something and then what God really did for me, such one of the greatest gifts God ever gave me is through Pastor Bob McGregor, our, our apostle, the father of this, this house, he puts his hand on my shoulder in front of the church, the whole church, and he said, Craig, you've said in your heart, if it's from God, you want it. And if it's from man, you want nothing to do with it. Well, God wants you to know it's from him, so get on board. <laughs> what? And tears just start flowing down my face because like, how would he know that exact thing to say to me? You don't just make that sort of thing up. It was me and my wife that knew that. That was the resounding thing in my heart. God, if it's from you, I want it. If it's from man, I want it. It was, it was not Bob McGregor speaking in the moment. That was the God of heaven. And listen, I'm a preacher, so I believe that anytime we speak the word of God, it's gonna bear fruit and it's gonna do something in you. But you, can, you could sit through a thousand sermons that are, that are perfectly biblically accurate, but something special happens when God speaks a personal, intimate, prophetic word to your heart. Talk about prophecy and its power for right now. It changed me in a moment and I was never the same. And so I wanna encourage you, if you are a doubter, if you're skeptic, if you're angry, if you just don't even have a clue what we're talking about, it's okay. I remember feeling that exact way. You're in the right place. Show up. Show up next weekend with an open heart, a heart that says, God, whatever you want, whenever you want it, however you want to move, if it's from you, I want it. If that's your heart, he'll speak to you. And it'll it could possibly change your life forever. And so... God did that for me. Something special happens when heaven winks at you. And it's not just for next weekend. It's for all the time because the Holy Spirit doesn't just show up when guest speakers from out of town come. The Holy Spirit is with us and amongst us and in us, and he wants to work through us. Amen? Awesome. Yeah. Great job. Yeah, that was beautiful. He's not just a Presbyterian Methodist but now spirit-filled, prophetic, on fire. He's always been on fire, but just a little, little different flavor now. A little different flavor. What, what a great guy. Great minister of the gospel. Uh, the next testimony was, I thought it was beautiful because it didn't happen at the sound, but it happened through a prophetic word away from the sound, not even from the stage. You don't have to have a stage to get a prophetic word or give a prophetic word. And um, it happened, and I see this word is happening now, but then it manifested a few months later. So, Nathan, would you please share? Thank you, brother. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, me and my wife got married early 2016, lived in our own house for about six to eight months in our own apartment, moved in with the in-laws, and we're living there for about, I think we were about a year and a half when we got this word. And kind of some backstory, um, we had always desired a home of our own, but we, 
we always felt like we were selfish in that desire because we, we have a good apartment, we have these good things. Why, why do we need to strive for something that maybe would be out of our a selfish intent? Anyway, so we had had kind of that in our mind and we had always desired a home and we had done the process early on. We got it pre-approved for like $140,000 and that's pretty much nothing here. And so, and currently it's really nothing now, but in November, November 10th in the evening after a gathering, we got prophesied over and there was a, quite a bit of a word prior to the, the word about our, our house that took place and that stuff still has yet to come to pass. But he had shared that word with us and started to pray for us and then he paused and he said, God wants you to have a house. And for me and my wife, that was like confirmation that God actually, our desire wasn't selfish in nature. It was a God desire that he had instilled in us. And so we were able to grab a hold of that and then start to put action towards that. And later on in the prayer, he said, in six months time, you'll be in your own home. And so we, we get done, we start doing the process again, and we get up to $180,000 pre-approved which is still not very much, pretty much nothing. But God is so faithful. And we, when you put your, your feet to the word that you get and you have to put action towards it to, to really see God move in the way that he can, because if, I, if we would have just got that word and just like J.O. said earlier, put it on the shelf and left it and just waited, I'm sure maybe down the road we would get it, but we, we grabbed a hold of that and we started putting our feet forward and, and acting upon that word. And so we, we get approved and the market is crazy then. And our budget, maybe a house comes on and it's like a fixer upper that should just be demolished and apartments built or condos built, whatever. And so we went closed door after closed door. And then one day, me and my wife were leaving to go on a date. It was like, seriously, like God had his whole hand on the whole situation. We had babysitting already and we were on our way out. Get a call from my realtor and he says, we got a house on the market we need to go look at. And so our date turned into going to look at our house and it was so beautiful. We were the first showing. And then by the time all the showings had taken place, there was like 26 showings on this house. It was on the market for $195,000. And we decided to submit an offer. And I don't know how many offers out of those 26 showings there were, but I know of one other one. But it was really cool how God ordained the whole thing. We were still only approved for $180,000. And we got an accepted offer for just a little bit over $200,000. And we, we had someone gift us some money to get us up to where we needed to be. And so... Literally, God just had his hand in every single aspect from the moment that we got that word. And honestly, throughout those, those months till we got the house, we kind of had forgotten about this word. And it was about two or three months after we had got our home, which was in fact exactly, we were in escrow on May 10th of 2018, which is exactly six months after we had received the word. And so we had kind of forgotten about the word and we revisited it later and we were like, wow, God, you are so faithful. Even when we, we may forget something, you are still faithful to do what you promised. And so I hope that encourages you to grab a hold of those words maybe that you have put on your shelf and run with them. That's so cool. Powerful. This is the third time I'm hearing these, but it's still so, so crazy powerful. The next... Do y'all have time to go a little longer today? Just a, good. We have a couple more testimonies, and then we'll see what the Holy Spirit does. The next one is about a miraculous healing that took place in the midst of a prophetic atmosphere healing in, in su several levels. So put your hands together for Crystal. Hey, everybody. All right, eleven, eleven. You're ready, right? I'm ready. All right, my first sound experience was actually in 2016, and uh, I didn't grow up with Jesus, so 
I was kind of new to this environment and I had never seen healing before, never heard about it. And I came, it was at the fairgrounds actually and people were talking in tongues. I thought that was fake. That's not fake. I promise you it's not. Um, it's so real. But anyway, fast forward. Um, four years ago, January 14, 2018, uh, I came into this room expecting miracles. I came into this room expecting. I don't know if I was necessarily expecting for myself at that point. Not Friday night, but when I was healed, yes, I was. Absolutely. So um, I, uh, I sat right over there where all my family and friends are right there. I sat right there. And I had the most excruciating pain I could ever imagine. Um, I had 15 years of chronic pain, endometriosis, lots of pain up in here. I'm not going to go there. But um, 10 years of migraines. Um, and for four months prior to this night, I could barely walk. Um, I had nerve pain all over my body. Um, I was miserable. I came to Bible studies and I drug myself around. Um, but, but I want to say that God already had performed a miracle in my life. That little baby girl right there, Malia Grace, is miracle number one, who came before my healing. She was about, just about two years old at that point. Um, but yeah, I sat over there and I was in so much pain. But also, I was baptized in 2012, three months before I married my husband, Barrett. And I started walking with Jesus. But I still had shame. I still had condemnation. I still had those feelings of those dep that depression and those terrible things and the, the things, the, the suicidal thoughts. And, and God, I just, I sat over there and I, I was like, enough is enough. And I raised my hand up in the sky and I said, God, I'm done with this life. I'm done with this pain. I'm done with this. I'm done with the enemy ruling my life. God, if you, I didn't say if, I said, when you heal me, God put healing on my hands. And he did. And right in that moment, the prophet sat right here, or stood right here and he goes, something's happening over there. And nobody's, I'm not, I could not answer. I did not have any words. And he goes, there's heat over there, there's heat. And that's all I could hear. And Jesus, right from heaven, touched me at the sound. I'll never forget it, I'm changed. Because he brought me to my knees and I bawled my eyes out. Um, and uh, I knew immediately that I was healed because I had no shame, no depression. No, nothing, no pain, and it has not come back. I don't have any pain in my body. I dance. I can do all kinds of things now that I could not do. Um, so that day, I also was baptized in the Holy Spirit. I did not know what that meant. Um, I spoke in tongues that day, and I was like, somebody help me. What does that mean? Okay, let me learn now. Okay, but complete freedom. You guys, healing is for you. In every area of your life, it does not have to be at a conference. It can be in a living room. It can be in their living room. Go, there's people in here that have been healed because God didn't just heal me. He actually has been healing through me and through my family. There's some people over there that had their back healed, Jade. Marriages, God, my niece has been delivered and she's been healed. And, and people, I, oh, okay, I got to interrupt. I got to pause and interrupt. I didn't say this in any other Okay, there's been healing that's been happening. I've laid hands on people since we started yesterday and people, people are having their backs realigned. And my, my niece said, Auntie, they didn't move. And I said, yes, they did. They moved their back realign and they don't think, they think I moved them. And I'm like, no, Jesus, you're stepping in right here and you're healing people right in the midst, right here. And you wanna do that. Uh, um, since obviously I'm real bold now. I'm bold as a lion, I'm living in obedience now. I shout down the devil all the time. I stop weeping and I start warring against the enemy. I talk to God all day long. The truth will set you free. The implanted word of God will save your soul. Healing is for every single one of you in every single area of your life, in every fear, in every anxiety, in every depression, those suicidal thoughts, your marriage, everywhere, right now. God is able, let him have all the areas of your life surrender it all. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. God is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. Let your prayers praise him and let your prayers push back the darkness. You guys deserve healing. You deserve it. Take it. 
When, when the words are spoken out at the sound, and you're like, dude, maybe I'm skeptical like Craig, man. Yo, what's up? Hey, come with your skepticism. Come see what God's gonna do. But surrender every air of your life so that you can feel the freedom that he has for you because he died for you and me. Woo, yeah. When he walks into the room, everything changes. When he walks into the room, everything changes. Everything changes. That was wonderful. Uh, the last one is uh, near and dear to our heart because it's Zach. He's like a son to the Lord here at the house. And um, there's a scripture that talks about when prophecy happens, if someone is an unbeliever, they come in and their life is changed the hidden secrets of their heart is revealed. You'll, you'll find that in 1 Corinthians. And, and that, some of that took place with Zach. It actually also took place with Craig, though he was a believer. Uh, some hidden things was, it just happens. And so Zach, would you come on up? He's been prophesied over about three times and he's gonna share a little bit uh, of that with you uh, this morning. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, every sound has been super impactful for me. So when Jay asked me to share, I was like, I have to share kind of the, the weave of how God has kind of weaved it all together. Um, just to give you a little background, if you haven't heard my testimony before, I, I grew up going to the church when I was younger. I actually came to Heart of the City as a youth, um, but stopped going when I was about 15 and didn't step foot in a church for like seven years. Didn't want anything to do with the church. I thought God wasn't real. And even if he was, I didn't want to know who he was. One of my favorite shirts I used to wear was literally a cross, just crossed out because I was just offended and uh, uh, always wanting to be offensive to the church. I, I didn't think that it was anything real happened in these, build, in these, in these four walls. But um, in 2016, my mom, she invited me to the sound. Um, we were at the fairgrounds in between this building and the last. And I remember sitting there and the guy gets up and he says, man, before we get started tonight, I feel like God wants to heal some people. And they didn't do the sound when I went to Heart of the City when I was younger, so I had never really seen that part of it before. But the weird thing is I had this little pain, just very, very barely noticeable pain that was in my neck that night. And the first thing he says is, I think someone has some pain in their neck right here. And I was like kind of sitting in my chair like, that's weird. He can't be talking about me though. But he gets off the stage and he starts walking towards me. And this room is like packed out, you know, not as big as this now, but probably about this, but in a smaller room, imagine. And he walks right up to me and he says, somebody right here has something going on with their neck right now. And I just rose my hand and I was like, yeah, man, I have this thing in my neck, like what of it? Not thinking like, how does he know that? And um, I think that the word was actually for the lady behind me who had a metal plate in her neck that actually ended up getting healed and he prayed for her right after me. But I think I was kind of like, the woman at the well on the way through Samaria that Jesus had to go through and touch me before he could, he could move on. And all he did was really simply just say, we just take that from you right now. And the second he did, I felt this tingling sensation start in the back of my neck and this feeling of love just rushed through my whole body. And immediately I knew that God was real. And I was like, wow, like I had no idea that God was this real. I looked at my mom and I said, mom, I went to church my whole life. I had no idea that God was this real. And immediately I gave everything up to him. I said, God, my life is yours. Like everything. Like I, I did not believe God was real, you guys. It wasn't like I kind of believe like, oh yeah, I think there's a God out there. Like, no, there's no God. You guys are fake. You guys are religious. This isn't real. And, and came in not sober. And, and immediately I was sobered, not just in the natural, but in the understanding that God had, had challenged everything that I had thought about him in that moment and overwhelmed me and completely changed my life. And, and from that moment forward, just started serving him, started serving in the church, um, started sharing the gospel or whatever I thought the gospel was at that time, didn't even know. I would just tell people what happened to me and just tell them, hey man, this happened to me, like God's real. My family started thinking I was crazy. My friends at work, people, it didn't matter though because my life was changed and um, it, it doesn't matter what people think. Um, and fast forward to the sound 2017, that I'm serving at the church consistently now and they asked me to be the ministry assistant for one of the prophets and just kind of help him out with anything that he needs. And, and he calls me out and he gives me this word and he starts just saying specific things about me like, I see leadership on your life. 
even though that leadership isn't really a thing in your life, it never has been and it, it really wasn't. He said, I, and I believe that you, you prayed for the prophetic mantle. You prayed for the prophetic gift. And I had prayed for it that week. I'd asked God, God, I want, I want to walk in prophecy. I want to walk in the prophetic. And he said, I, I see you anointed to preach to young people with a prophetic gift. And he said that, and, and, and I just felt the presence of God so strongly and just knew that, that God was doing something in my heart. And, and then fast forward again, uh, you know, I start serving in youth. I start preaching at youth here and there, and, and I'm just on fire to, to serve in youth ministry. And then I get back from a couple mission trips uh, to Europe and to Brazil, and, and I, I come back just on fire to do missions and, and thinking that God's going to send me somewhere. And um, I get back 2019, and Bob McGregor, the same guy that, that gave Craig that word, he calls me out. I was sitting right over here. There's some people over here that were, a lot of people were here when this happened. And, and he said that, uh, again, gave me some words very specific to things to do with my family. He said, you're, he said, God's done a radical thing in your life. He's done a 180 on you. He said, your family thinks you're different. They even think you're crazy. And it's so true. And he said that, but God's put a word in you to preach. God's put a word in you to preach. And, and I, I believe that God's entrusting you with something in the days that lie ahead. And it wasn't until about nine months later that the church asked me to come on staff to co-lead co youth with Logan at first and then lead young adults. And, and so just to see where God took me from, from where I was, completely an unbeliever, to radically changing my life in this atmosphere of the, of the prophetic and how God used that. He used the obedience of someone to give me that word. And, and, and immediately it changed my life and God has, has changed me. And you can kind of see the weave of how it got from there to here. And obviously there are lo there's lots of things that have happened in between that and things that he's confirmed and spoken to me. But these are very pinnacle things. And if, that, if you have a hard time believing that or you're like, whatever, like I have them recorded on my phone. So like J.O. says, it's too late. Like it's real. It, it's, it's so real. And so um, I just wanted to encourage you guys with something as... Uh, we were worshiping uh, earlier this, the, at the first service during the, the last song that we sang. Um, I just felt like God put this verse on my heart. And I think it kind of, uh, it ties together that whole song that we sang. It's in Romans 8. It says, for we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. It says that we have been given the first fruits of the Spirit. In the song, it talks about this assurance, the blessed assurance is what the Bible refers to it as, that, that we have the Holy Spirit has been poured into our hearts and, and it cries out. And so as we're seeking God this month and as we're going into the sound and you feel that stirring in you, whether you're fasting or not, you feel it. You feel it, you feel the hunger rising in the room because there's something that's built inside of us that God has put there that, that makes us want to cry out and makes us groan for God because he's our father, because he created us and he wants to show us our identity in him. But I just want to encourage you that it says the whole world is groaning inwardly. The whole world is groaning. The whole world is watching you guys. It's watching and waiting for you to say something, to do something with what you believe. And I don't want to condemn you for not sitting there and doing nothing. But if that's you, if you're, if you're not doing something with what you believe, man, I would say I have every right to say you need to get up and do something with what you believe because God, because God wants to use you. And, if, and nobody, nobody ever shared with me the gospel. Nobody other, nobody other than people on staff at a church. Nobody but people on staff at a church. It's one of the reasons why I never thought I would work at a church because like, I'm like, man, I want to be out there. I want to be telling people about this news. I want to be sharing it with people. And so, I mean, it makes sense because in Ephesians, it says that we're called to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And so if I can't reach the whole city, man, I need you guys to see that God has given you his spirit, that the world is looking and watching you and waiting for you to say something. Because if I never found that love, I would be in jail or dead. I would not be in the place that I'm at. And so I'm begging you, I'm begging you as you cry out for God to fill you, fill you, fill you. I pray that your same hunger would say, God, use me, use me, use me. God, use me, send me out. 
fill me with your spirit and send me out. This week is not just about coming and having this emotional experience. It's about being equipped and empowered and imparted to so that you can be sent out into the world. And I'm sorry if it doesn't come across loving or, or, or soft, but man, there's people that are dying and going to hell every day. And I would have been one of them if nobody shared with me. The Bible says by one man's obedience that many are saved and he's talking about Jesus. But in the same way, I think by our obedience that many will be saved. Many will come to a knowledge of God. So would you guys stand with me? I want to go back into this song again. And as we cry out, as we finish this Sunday and we get ready for Seek Week and the Sound, I want you to make a decision now that you're not going to wait for the sound to get empowered. But the same spirit, just like Craig said, the same spirit that will be at the sound is here now and he wants to change us. He wants to use us.